takes the show. Well, it's probably going to be absolutely nowhere near as technical as Tariq. It's going to be a fine end. Yeah, so you need a couple of things that do a fine end, which makes it a little bit different to like a traditional wrestling fine end. It's just my direction. Yeah, so like my grips first. For the fine ones, I'll, I'll only attack the fine end if this arm's behind me. Like, yeah, if this arm, if I have a tricep up here, and this arm's flailing in front, and there's plenty of other things I can do from here, like two on ones, I can come to arm drag, to get to the rear body lock. So, fireman's for me is only when this arm is behind the body. Yeah, so with my grip, obviously it's different, gi, no gi, so I need to do things on my elbow, which locks his arm in place. So obviously, if I'm in a gi, I take this tricep grip, that grip's solid now, I can do what I want from now and I lose it. Obviously with no gi, once you start sweating, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to set the tricep grip on my elbow, I'm just going to pinch it into my rib. Yeah, so just cut the tricep, and just pinch this into my rib. That's where I put my head. Yeah, so I need to put my head on the shoulder here. As Jay tries to pull this arm now, I'm not squeezing at all. I never want to use my like, strength as such in the arms. I want to relax. I'm just using my body. So like, if Jay tries to pull that arm, I can follow that now pretty comfortably without any squeeze. Now, on top of that, like nine times out of ten, people do a fire run, you go this way, yeah, 90 degrees. Which in gi, I'd probably stick with it. Yeah, but for no gi, a natural reaction for Jay if I drop to a fire run is to pull his arm back. Yeah, so if I turn 90 degrees, and as I turn in now, Jay pulls this arm back, we both go in different ways. Yeah. I'll do that one more time. If I turn 90, he pulls the arm back. I come in. I'm going to lose it every single time. So, for me, my direction is keep forward. So, I put my back knee central in between his feet. And I literally just travel forward. And my lead leg steps to the outside. It's literally just one quick movement. In one movement, I go from here to here. And I just look straight at the ceiling. Yeah. Now, as well as keeping the arm, it's going to stop me getting locked in the crucifix. You see people say all the time, you do a fire run, you're at risk of a crucifix. You are here, yeah, more or less put myself in a crucifix. Whereas here, because we direct is much different, to get me in a crucifix here, it's much harder. Yeah? It's literally just direction. I'm going tricep, pinching my elbow, and putting my head on this near shoulder. Here, now when you get here, it's actually part to try and pull the arm. You should be able to just follow, keeping your arm relatively relaxed. Now it's all to do with the change of pace. Like if it's one, one pace and taking more than one step, it would be very hard for me to hit this. So I need to be able to go from here to here in like half a second. And you need to be able to go from like a relaxed state to exploding real fast. You can only do that if your upper body's relaxed. If you're like super strong here, now I've got to relax before I attack. If I'm relaxed to start from here, I'm straight in one movement. And now because of my direction, I'm coming up like a high crotch. And now I'm going forward. So my lead knee comes to the floor. As my lead knee comes to the floor, my lead shoulder, or my right shoulder, needs to follow this knee, so I'll come this way. And now I can put this shoulder on the floor, pinning with my shoulder, so I can transition side. This is why sometimes I'm able to stand up. It's not because I'm fucking super strong at all. It's because that first movement puts me underneath his hips. But if I go 90 degrees here, I'm gonna pick him up. Yeah, I've got to get this arm under his hip and pick him up. If I change my level here and go high crotch, I'm already under his hip. So now, I'm up, I can finish. So all you're going to do is just go one, pinch your elbow, head on the near shoulder. Ask him to pull that arm, nice and relaxed. From here, relax it, flat knee in the middle, high crotch. Lead knee to the floor, rotate with it. Now put your shoulder to the floor. Hit him with the shoulder. 
Do you like to turn them? Yeah. So we've got five minutes or so. Let's go. One, two, three. Well, typically when you're when you've got that overhook, um, what are you doing with the left hand, and what do you find that they do to try and counter you before you do the throw? Like firemen, I've never come out to go firemen as a go-to. Uh, like firemen is not a go-to for me. Like for me, it's all collar ties, snap down, under up, working to double unders. Big reaction I'll get from here is these hips go back. Now I can go firemen. Yeah, so it's always off the back of someone. Like I don't think firemen is a strong enough attack for me to come out and no gi firemen to. Because the finish position is not phenomenal all the time either for me. Yeah. So like for me, I'd rather than a fireman, I'd rather get an headlock, drag into the mat, and get behind it. But if I come here, snap him down, he pushes up, now I can go. It's like for me, I'll build a little base of snap down in the middle, arm drag on the right, two on one on the left. When he pulls this back, pulls me into a plane. It's like, Get a decent fireman to then put it on the back of everything else. What's your favourite follow up if you feel you're losing the leg? So that's why I like going forwards. So I like going forwards. If, I, if I'm going to lose some, it'll be the arm normally. Yeah, so I'll come here, he rips the arm, and now I'm in position. What if you feel that you're losing the leg when you're, you're already shot and you feel your, your, your arm is stretching and you're losing the, the leg that you're, you're planning to grab? See, if it did happen, that really happens because when I drop this knee, like I said, it'll always be the arm. So I get under the hip line with the knee. So if he tries to pull that leg back out, it's not work. But okay. if it was the case, come here, he's slow. Yeah. I'd come here and pop here. Oh, okay. Then I'd be coming around with that single back to a rear body lock. So basically, if I'm losing an arm or a leg, you just go for I'm always leg. looking to work to a rear body lock. Basically. Thanks. Yeah, so when you're talking about these guys are under, you always round well, over. All day, yeah. And you're saying if you get to overhook, it's like an opportunity to get to his shoe strength. Yeah, like I, I don't want to ever, ever be in an overhook, yeah. basically. So if I get here and he's good here, he takes a body lock. I'm yeah. fucked. Yeah. yeah. Like for me, I'd rather go one, build pressure in the middle, break him in the middle, so I can get here for taking down the submissions. Or, obviously then, off the inside ties, I can buck on those. Arm drag, two on ones. I can break him up by using his feet. Tie that in as well. He start posturing up from here. Now fire It's like, what was your question again, mate? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just like favouring over, underhooks over, over hooks and stuff. Yeah. Is there, sure. is there a way you like to go from that overhook and get, get away from that? I just, I, when I set out, I want underhooks now. Yeah. So like for me to get an underhook, I'm always going to look all the time. And for me, at this arm, like the judo for me, I am going to fucking feel boring here. I'm going to heel. I'm going to play sleeping top. Yeah. I'm trying to do the same nogi. For me, this is my sleeve, and this is my lapel. Just because right now I'm controlling all the space. So now for me to control the space even more, I can change my level and go to a deep under up. Like when you go to an under up, just be careful, because obviously you probably all see in all hand or snap back thing on. That'll only happen if you've got like a lazy under up. I take an under up, I'm going to step with it, change my level and go elbow to ceiling. And one massive thing that I do is put my ear on his bicep. Because again, no gear, you need to use your head to control. So like, Back from here, Jay feels the pressure, rips his arm off. Gone. I go here, I'm gonna put my ear on it, he rips it as hard as he can. Easy for me to keep. Now I just focusing on that, ripping that, I can come to here. I'm going wide elbows. Now he tries to sit out. Now we start getting to better positions. And then just off the back of me doing this, he sits back. Now I can time the snap down. A lot. Start bringing your hips in. A little bit in. Turn it down this way. Basically, building as much pressure as I can with under hooks, and then picking him off from his reactions to my pressure. Basically. One. One.
Thank you. Thanks for that. Thanks. Get some more attacking glass. I'm so sorry. Uh, so I'm just going to show some passing. So starting from in reverse Delaquiva and how I'm going to deal with this hook pretty much and get to my kneecap. 